you please. Um, so today we're going to do uh, section 5.3. The method of least squares. Okay. So as you, as we mentioned last time, this technique was um, developed by by Gauss, uh, who is generally related, uh, generally considered to be the greatest greatest of all mathematicians of all time, um, uh, and. Uh, he used it to predict the position of an asteroid uh, more accurately than the, predict the future position of an asteroid more accurately than anybody else could at the time. Okay, so um, this method actually relies on um, some uh, things that we did last time. Uh, first is the direct sum decomposition. Rn. And the second is, actually we didn't do it last time, but some time before that, the fundamental subspaces there. Okay. So um, can anybody remind us what the direct sum decomposition is? What, 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 what was the direct sum? What's a direct sum? Yeah, Julie. Um, it is a unique sum of um, two subspaces. Yeah, well, yeah. Okay, so you've got these two subspaces, right? You've got a, you've got your whole thing, and you can break it up into the, the you can break it up into a sum of, of two subspaces, um, and there's some sort some sort of uniqueness involved, right? And the uniqueness is that um, uh, that uh, well, one uh, one everything uh, each vector in each vector in your in your your sum space uh, can be expressed as um, as somebody in U plus somebody in V, right? And two, this uh, decomposition, this expression is unique. So that's what a direct sum is, right? So maybe I should say, just in general, this is not just for Rn, but for any W, right? Uh, so direct sum, right? If we say W is R, uh, W is U plus V, that means that everybody in W can be expressed as somebody in U, and somebody, somebody in U, somebody in U, and somebody in V, and further that expression is unique. Okay, but we also have this theorem that said that. Um, uh, if S is a subspace of Rn, then we can express Rn as um, as a direct sum of S with something else, which was S direct sum cross S per S per right. That you can break uh, whenever you have a subspace, you can express R as the direct sum of that subspace and its orthogonal complement. Okay, and that's the one that, that's going to be useful. That's the one that's going to be useful to us. So that's that's this guy. And the second thing is the fundamental subspaces theorem, right? Um, which one form of which says that if you look at the range of A and take its orthogonal complement, then you get the null space of A transpose. <laughs> okay. Right. Or alternatively, if you look at the range of A transpose per, you get the null space of A. <coughs> okay. Okay, so just, you know, these are things that you've seen before, um, and we're going to use them today. Okay, so uh, method of these squares. Um, it's a nice application of these guys, a uh, nice application of uh, these ideas. And the motivation is like this. OK, so suppose um, uh, you want to solve a system ax equals b. So we're back in you know, our, our you know, this is a problem that we've been we dealt with uh, for 
for some, we've been dealing with for some time. Um, but uh, we have the following uh, setting. Um, a is an M by N matrix, and M is bigger than it. Where M is bigger than N. In other words, it's an over it's an overdetermined system. Right? More equations, more equations than a notes. Okay. Okay, so for example, right, suppose we are in um, R2, right? Suppose we're in R2, and somebody says, I'd like you to find the intersection of three lines. Okay, you've got more equations, you would have more equations than unknowns, right? Suppose somebody says, I want you to find the intersection, I've got these three lines, and I'd like to find the intersection of those three lines, right? Of course, the problem is that there is no, there is no common, there is no answer, right? It's overdetermined. So likely you don't have any solution. So probably, probably, probably no solution. Right? Probably no solution. Unless you're very lucky and all this, those multiple lines happen to intersect in, in a single point. Right? That would be pretty lucky. But chances are you don't have a solution. Okay. So probably no solution. Um, so um, you could give up. Right, that'd be one way to one way to solve it. So I'm just not going to try it because there is there's probably no solution. Um, but instead of giving up, we do something else. We say um, uh, instead instead of giving up, we change the problem. Okay, we change the problem and we say well. Um, let's find, or let's say, can we find, can we find x um, such that ax minus b is, is minimal? Okay, so our original problem was can we find x, right? You want to find an x such that ax equals b, right? In other words, ax minus b is 0. That would be great, but it's probably not going to happen, right? So you say, well, okay, I'm going to give up on that, but I'm going to, can I, how about this problem? Can I find the x that gives me sort of the best possible answer, right? I'm going to find an x such that the, the, the error, right, this is some sort of error. I'd like this to be 0, but it's not going to be 0. Um, ax minus b, my, so I want to minimize my error. Okay, so that's a new that's a new problem. Okay, okay. and now um, <coughs> let's think about this and rephrase it slightly more. Let's rephrase it a little bit further. Um, we want we're looking for. Uh, we want x, um, let me say this one. We want uh, some point ax, right? That's in the range of, of a, right? We're looking for the guy in the range of a um, <coughs> for which P minus uh, B is minimal. Right. We want something in the range. Uh, we haven't we haven't really said too much different, right? We're looking for we're looking for some x such that ax is minimal. In other words, we're looking for some ax where we're looking for some point in the range of a where where P minus B is minimal. Right. We said the same thing again. Um, now recall that the range of A is a subspace. Right. The 
range of A is actually a subspace. So our problem is, um, right, uh, if you have a subspace and you have some vector, can you find a point on the subspace that's closest to that vector? Right? Can you find the vector in the subspace that's um, uh, that's closest to that to that other vector? Okay, so um, let me write up the theorem over here. Okay. So we'll need the following theorem. Let S be a subspace in Rn. Um, and B be some vector in Rn. Um, so let me, no, no, forget it. Just keep it like that. Um, then, part one. Uh, there exists a unique vector. There is a unique vector, um, P in S, um, for which the difference P minus B is minimized. So this is this, what this theorem is saying is that we have hope. There actually is a vector that will minimize that, that distance. So there is, there, is a, there is a vector. And in fact, there's only one vector that will do that. Right? There's a unique vector that minimizes the distance between uh, the subspace and, and the, that vector B that we're aiming at. Right? We want to get this vector B. We don't have, we can't get it. But we can get there is a vector that minimizes the, the difference. <coughs> okay. Um, two, uh, P is that closest vector. If and only if um, B minus P is in S part. So there is a solution, and the solution is the, 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 the vector that minimizes the error is the one where if you subtract it from B, then you get something in S part. OK, so let me draw a picture that will that make this completely clear. <coughs> okay. So let's think, let's pretend that uh, we're in R3 and that um, our S is the xy plane. Okay, so this is our x, s, right? And so the theorem says it's something that will seem completely, completely natural to you, right? Here we have our vector b, right? And we're looking for the vector in s that is closest to b, right? We're looking for the vector in s that's closest to b. Well, what do you think that vector is going to be? What vector is going to be closest to b? Right, do you want to find a vector? So. Here's my guess, uh, here's my first guess, P, P. You want to find a vector where the difference, right, where the difference is, is smallest. Well, what vector will minimize that difference? Should I take, should I take this guy? No, right, the difference is huge, right? Should I take this guy? Right, what vector should I choose? to somebody nearby and say, it should be this. <laughs> yes, OK. So um, uh, Nico, what do you say? Um, I was thinking like the, what, what would be the y-axis, which is the best for 
Yeah. Uh, so, wait. Like if S is is S just the line? S, no, S was S was the X Y plane. Sorry. Oh, so it's R plane. Yeah, S is the X Y plane. Shame. S is the X Y plane. Right. S is the X Y plane, and you're looking for and you have some other vector b. Okay. And you're looking for the vector in the plane whose difference is is closest. Right, so this difference is smallest, right? So, let's see. Uh, is that the projection of beyond the yeah. S? Yeah, so just drop perpendicularly down here, right, and take that guy, right? And that's that's going to be your P, right? That's sort of what, what you might think is, think is true. And you notice that the difference B minus P, right, B minus P is, uh, is this thing here, right? Is this thing here, which is in S perp. Okay, so the way you find the guy who's, 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 who, for whom the error is smallest is to look for the one where the difference is in S perp. Okay, and you see that the difference is perpendicular to S. Wait. Wait. If you... Never mind. I was going to ask what happens if you have a vector pointing straight up, but then you just have the zero vector. Yeah, that would be the zero vector. Right. So if it's already in this perp, then yeah, then zero would be there. Okay. okay. So you know, and then you know, basically what this is saying is that you know this happens in in whatever spaces you know, in in n-dimensional space this works for whatever whatever subspace you have. Okay. So that is your you know your three-dimensional intuition is holds true in all dimensions. Okay. okay. So. Um, <coughs> Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, the proof hinges on the direct sum decomposition. So uh, S is in R n. So we can write uh, R n as S direct sum as per. Okay. So you take your B, right? B is in R n, and you can decompose it as something in S plus something in S per Right? So in the picture here, you take your you take your B and you decompose it as something in S and something in S perp. Right? Something in S and something in S perp. And what we're gonna say is that B sub S is, is what we're looking for. Okay? So uh, Pretty, maybe it's intuitive. Um, let's 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 say that this is, show that this works. So I claim that um, uh, this guy B sub S, B sub S is is the vector we're looking for. Um, the vector in S with minimal distance to B. So here's, here's why. Uh, maybe I'll come up. Here's why. Suppose we take any other vector, um, take any other vector, V and S. Take some other vector in V. Take some other vector V. And we're, what we're going to see is that any other vector will will be worse. Okay, any other vector will be worse than worse than this guy. Okay, so let's look at B minus. Let's look at B minus B minus B magnitude squared. Okay, so let's look at the distance between B and this other vector V. Um, and we'll see that it's the, the distance between these two guys is worse than the distance between um, uh, between B and B sub S. Okay. So I say, okay, well, let's look. This is the same thing as the distance between, so I'm going to do something funny, which is subtract.
subtract p sub s and add on p sub s at the same time. Okay, is that okay? We just added zero. We, have, we do this a lot. I do this a lot. We, have a, we do this a lot. Right? We add on a fancy looking zero, right? Um, and you notice that that um, B minus BS uh, <coughs> is in S perp, right? B minus BS is in S perp, and BS minus V is where? Well, BS is an S, and V is an S, so the difference is an S, right? So you have the, okay, so you have the square of the magnitude of these two vectors that are perpendicular to each other, right? The square of the magnitude of two vectors that are perpendicular to each other, right? So pictorially, you have one vector, um, A, you have another vector, B, that are perpendicular to each other, and you have the sum, right? You have the sum a plus b, right? And you're looking at this. You're looking at the the length squared. What's the length squared? What can I say about the length squared of this sort of thing? The Pythagorean theorem, right? By the Pythagorean theorem, I know that's going to be the sum of the squares of these guys, right? So you might be thinking, well, did I know the Pythagorean theorem in Rn? Yes, you do. Just figure it out. Okay, you can do it. Um, okay. So Pythagorean theorem is true in Rn. Uh, if you, if you, we can do it, or I think you can actually do it by yourself. Um, anyway, Pythagorean theorem says that uh, this thing is going to be this squared plus this squared. And you see that that is bigger than um, that is bigger than or equal to the magnitude of b minus s uh, b s minus v square. Uh, I'm sorry, b minus b s. B minus b s. Okay, so this is the point. This is this is the point, right? If you take anybody else in S, if you take anybody else in S, then the distance from from B to V is going to be the dis bigger than the distance from B to B S, right? That is, B B sub S is the closest guy in S. Everybody see that? Right? Because if you choose anybody else, right? Anybody else? Any, the distance of b to v um, is going to be is this thing, right? Is this thing? Well, this is this is bigger than this is bigger than the distance from b b to b to b s, right? The only way they're equal, right? The only way the only way we uh, get equality, right? Um, The only way we can make uh, this thing equal to this minimum, this distance, is if the distance from B S to V equals zero. Right. The only way this V could be as good as this guy is if it is that guy. Right. There's nobody else who, who's as good as B sub S. OK. And that's, that's basically two. We've done two parts here, right? Um, we see that um, there's only one vector that minimizes this distance, right? And we see who it is. It's, it's B sub S, right? It's B sub S. B sub S. Um, 
the unique vector for which b minus b minus it is an S-perm. Any questions? Any questions? I think this is simple. It should be simple. It should be simple. Any questions? Um, after I went through my college career in math, um, which I found you know, really hard, uh, my a good friend of mine said to me, um, I wish they had told us that everything was trivial, uh, which was kind of an inter interesting thing to say. It's just that it's, it's funny, but after you go through it and you look backwards on it, it actually turns out to be very simple. When you're looking, when you're looking up at it, it seems, it seems difficult. But once you're past it, you look down on it, it's like, oh, okay, that was actually not that hard. Okay, so that is, you don't want to be intimidated, right? Try not to be intimidated by anything um, in mathematics, right? It's all just one simple statement after another, right? It's just like, well, um, we want to see that, right? We have the direct sum decomposition, right? We want to see that, that B sub S is the closest guy. Well, let's take some other guy. Well, this is bigger than the distance. The distance between this and some other guy will be bigger than the distance between B and B sub S. That's it. Right, so don't make it bigger than it is. Yeah, read. And that proves that theorem, but it doesn't necessarily, does it prove our geometric interpretation that that vector always has to be the best one? Yeah, yeah, right, because what is it saying? It's saying that this B sub S, the one in the direct sum decomposition, right, that is, you have some, you know, you have some, I don't know, like this is some three-dimensional space in some four-dimensional space, mm -hmm. saying. And what it's saying is that um, you take the direct sum decomposition, you get the guy BS and BS perp, right? And that BS is BS um, is the closest one. Okay. Right? So that's that's exactly what our picture is. Right? I mean, except you can now this is, you know, whatever dimensions in whatever dimensions. Okay. Right. So this, you know, Right, this didn't, this wasn't two dimensional or three dimensional. Okay. So when you take that direct sum decomposition, you get um, you get a vector and it and the like projection. Yeah, yeah, that. yeah. Because okay. you you've got your s. Whoops, you've got your s, and you've got your s perf, right? In R n, in R n. Right. This is maybe this is some k dimensional space, and then this is n minus k dimensional. Okay, let's, uh, all right, so let's go on. Okay, so we have this theorem now um, that says that <coughs> the way to solve the, the modified problem is to take your B and then project it, take, um, take its projection onto, onto S, right? Take its orthogonal projection onto S. Okay, so, um, or actually more clearly, take your B and then take its direct, take your B and then take the direct sum decomposition and then this B sub S is your answer. Okay, okay, so, um, here. Okay, so, uh, so uh, we have again, rephrase the problem. The problem is now, um, uh, can we find, can we find x such that um, b minus a x, so I can make this x hat, because this is the notation they use in the book. So can we find x hat such that b minus x hat is in the range of A perp. Right. Right. Here is our range of A. Here is our B. Right. And we want to find X such that B minus AX, B minus AX is perpendicular. 
we want to find x, x hat such that b minus ax hat is perpendicular to the range of a. Right. That's our new problem now. It's okay? Okay. But now we can pull in the fundamental subspecies theorem. What do we know about the range of a perp? It is B null space of A. This is the null space of A. So our question, oh no, it's not. A transpose. The null space of A transpose. So our question is uh, uh, can we find such that uh, a transpose times b minus a x hat equals zero, the vector is zero. Okay. And so we've taken our original problem, <coughs> right? Our original problem was, can we find a, can we find x such that a x equals b? Okay. And we gave up on that problem. We switched to this problem. Can we find x hat such that a t of b minus x hat, b, mi b minus a x hat is equal to zero? Okay, so it's a different problem, but you know, this is the one that we can solve. And this equation is called the normal equation. The normal equation, because normal is another word for perpendicular. And what we're saying is that we want to find this vector that is perpendicular to the range of A. OK. But then you see that that's the same thing as, that's the same thing as saying, can you find that we want x hat such that a t um, a x hat equals a t b. And this is also called the normal equation. It's the same equation, of course. Okay. Um, remark. Uh, if we're lucky. So so hold on. Um, okay, we can solve for, we can solve for um, uh, x hat in the standard way. using gauss jordan reduction. Okay. So we give up on, on solving our unsolvable problem, uh, and we instead we switch to a problem that has a solution. Right? The solution is you know, to, find the, to find the guy that is uh, the, per the orthogonal projection of B onto your range of A. Okay. And so this is this is the solvable problem. The normal equation will have a solution, and um, the way you find it is just to do uh, Gauss-Jordan reduction. Okay. Um, if you're lucky, if you're lucky, um, uh, a a t a will be invertible. And in that case, then you, know, you can solve explicitly for x hat, of course, right? It'll be at a inverse um, at b. Okay. And uh, right. 
and this this gives you something cool, right? If your if your ATA is invertible, then you have something really cool here, right? This is this thing here is the thing that projects B down onto the range of A. Okay, so in which case. Um, uh, AT A inverse um, AT is called is called the orthogonal projection orthogonal projection um, onto onto the major thing. Okay. So in this case you have an operator, right? You have this 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 thing, you have this matrix that whatever you feed it, it'll it'll project it onto the range of A. Right? So you, you feed it anything, you feed it some vector, and it'll give you it'll project it onto the onto the range of A. You feed it some other vector, it'll project it onto the range of A. Okay. Okay. But you may not you might not have that. Right? This thing might not be might not be invertible, okay. Um, but in any case, you can always solve this thing. Even if this guy's even if this guy's not invertible, you're still we still know that there's going to be a solution that you can get via Gauss Jordan reduction. Yeah. So if there's if it's not invertible and we have to solve using Gauss Jordan reduction, we can't use the orthogonal projection and just feed things in and have it. Right, right. You can't you can't um, you can't just put in your B here right. and evaluate. But you can you can still solve this. Right. Um, the thing is that you'll get um, you'll get uh, you'll get different there may be multiple possibilities for X hat, but there will be just one, but AX hat will be unique. Okay. Okay. AX hat. There's only one AX hat. Right. There may be different. A, there may, may be different X hats, but they're all going to give you the same AX hat. Right. Because we saw there's only one. Okay. Um. Let's do. Uh, let's do an example. And this one is from your book. Um. So. Uh, it says find the quadratic function, quadratic function um, that has the best least squares, least squares fit to the data. 0, 3, 1, 2, 2, 4, 3, 4. Okay. So, right, you have, um, you have these points, right? You've got 0, 3, you've got 1, 2, you've got 2, 4, and you've got 3, 3, 4. Okay. And you want a quadratic quadratic function, a function of degree 2 that fits these four points, right? Of course, three points determine a quadratic, right? Just like two points determine a line, three points determine a quadratic, and so we're overdetermined, right? There is, there is no quadratic that will hit all these four points. Okay. Um, so uh, we want um, some quadratic polynomial C0 plus C1x plus C2x squared um, um, such that p of 0 is 3, right? p of 1 is 2, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so that's what you want. Um, right, in other words, um, you have c0 plus uh, you have C naught must be three, right? C naught plus C one plus C two must be two, right? Etc. Right. 
Now you can rewrite this as a as a, as a matrix equation. One one one, one two four, one three nine. C not C one C two equals three two four four. C0 plus 0C1 plus 0C2 is 3, C1, C0 plus C1 plus C2 is 2, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Right? So we're just taking, we're taking these, these, these things and writing them in a matrix form. Let's see. What's wrong? Wait, I'm, I'm confused about how you got the... The matrix? Yeah. Well, look at this, right? P of 2 is 4, P of 3 is uh, 4, yeah, okay. So you say, oh look, P of 2, that means that C0 plus 2C1 plus 4C2, right, P of 3 is C0 plus 3C1 plus 9C2, right? You're saying that we say C0 is 3, C0 plus C1 plus C2 is 2, C0 plus C2 C two C one plus four C. So that's that's exactly the system. We've taken that and wrote, written as a matrix. Okay. We have a system of equations. We write this as a matrix. Okay. 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 Which has no answer. Okay. It has no answer. So you know what do you do with it? You take um, uh, we uh, take the normal. So let's call this um, A C equals B. We take uh, the equation, the normal equation, right? A T A C hat equals A A B. Uh, a transpose B. Okay, so just you see, you know, the normal equation is just multiply your original equation by by T A transpose. Right. So you get this, and um, right. Uh, this turns into this is the same thing as four six fourteen six fourteen thirteen thirty six excuse me fourteen thirty six ninety eight c not c one c two equals thirteen twenty two fifty four. Okay, which can be solved. It turns out that um, P of X is 2.75 minus 0.25 X plus 0.25 X squared. And so that's the, um, that's the best quadratic that matches the data in the least squares sense. So, um, right. The moral is, right, if you can't solve this, then you try to solve the solve the normal equations, and that'll give you some some answer that is you know, close or as as good as as good as an answer as, as you can get. Okay. Let me just say one last thing. We've got two minutes. Um, So, um, here's a useful theorem, maybe. Um, if the rank of A is N, then A transpose A will be invertible. Okay. 
Right. Um, and in that case, then you've got a projection, you've got your orthogonal projection, right? Because this guy's invertible, so you can have, right? If you, in case you're wondering, you know, um, when do you have an orthogonal, orthogonal projection, here's one, one possibility, right? If the rank of A is, is, is N, then AT is invertible. Okay. Um, or an M by N matrix. No, it's an M by N matrix. Yes. Yeah. Yes, is that what you said? Yeah. Okay, sorry. Okay, so um, why? Right. Uh, let's show that that the kernel of ATA is zero. Right. Maybe I should say the null space. The null space of ATA is zero. Because if the null space is zero, then we've got a one-to-one -one map, and it's square, and it'll be invertible. Okay, so let's think about it. Um, if uh, ATA x equals zero, if ATA x equals zero, then that tells you that um, AX is in the null space of AT. Right. Which, by the fundamental subspaces theorem, is the same as the range, the orthogonal component of the range of the range of A. But AX is in the range of A. Right. AX is in the range of A, so what does that tell you? AX is zero, zero right? Because it's in the range it's in range of A, it's also in the complement, <coughs> orthogonal complement of range of A, so it's got to be zero. Okay. Why does that tell me that X is zero? Why does it tell me that X is zero? Plus. Because A is invertible. A is not invertible. Right. But the, rank of a is in. the rank of A is N. Yeah, so A is a A is an N by N matrix. Yeah. So it's not we okay. can't we can't talk about it being invertible. Okay. Okay. But yeah, the rank of A is N. So that tells us that the, the nullity nullity of A is zero. Right. The nullity of A is zero. And so the only thing that gets sent to zero is zero. So by the rank theorem. <coughs> that tells us that x is zero. Okay. Okay. So that tells us that the, the null space of A transpose A is zero. Um, and so A, trans A transpose A is invert forward. Thus, A transpose A is invert. Okay, okay, that's it for today.